How's it going guys? My name is Tavarsh and today we are going to take an in-depth look at all of my cars. Where are they? Starting at less than 100 bucks, MVMT watches offer classic design, awesome quality, and jaw-dropping good looks that are perfect for every occasion. My viewers can get $15 off today with free shipping by going to MVMT.com and using the code TAVARISH15. Join the movement. All right, there's one, and I think I see, yep, there's some more, and there's some more cars in the garage. So uh, yeah, sorry for that intro. I know it probably wasn't the most genuine, but um, I do want to get some stuff off my chest. I want to address a few things before we start going over the car. So let's get to that. How's that? Good? Like for good. Comment for good. Don't do anything for bad. 2017 was an awesome year for me, for the car community, for anyone who likes cars. 2017 was an interesting year for me because I got to drive a lot of really interesting cars. I know I use that word. Uh, I got to work on a lot of really awesome cars. I got to meet a lot of really awesome people and uh, start a lot of, to me, really cool projects. That last part is a little bit of a contentious issue, especially on my channel, just because I've got a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback from you guys uh, saying that I need to, well, finish what I start. And I wholeheartedly agree with you guys. I 100% agree. I dropped the ball on that and uh, I do apologize, but 2018 is a new year. And even though we're in February now, it doesn't mean that we can't start a new year's resolution. So my new year's resolution for 2018 is to finish everything that I started in 2017. And also, we're gonna start some stuff in 2018, don't you worry. But in 2018, what I wanna do is I want to finish all the projects that I left by the wayside or I've forgotten about or just you guys have been asking me about to no end. So the number one thing I'm gonna do is my Ultimate Daily Driver, my 2000 S500. So the Ultimate Daily Driver build, that is gonna be finally finished and I'm selling it off. So if any of you want a really good, relatively low mileage, it has about 110,000 miles S-Class with every single option that it ever came with, other than I think radar guided cruise control, then uh, this is your car because yeah, I really like this car. The only reason I don't have it as a daily driver is because I got the S600. But in other major announcement news, I am changing around the schedule of my videos. And the schedule of my videos has been really sort of neither here nor there. Sometimes I upload multiple videos a week, sometimes it's only one a week, sometimes it's none a week. I don't like this JonTron-esque schedule, so I'm gonna have something a little bit more consistent for you guys and a little bit easier for me to deal with because honestly, I don't wanna be editing videos for six or seven hours a day because it doesn't leave me a lot of time to actually make them. So what I'm gonna try to do is, it's gonna pain me to say this, but uh, I'm gonna try to go daily. Now I know what you're saying, when you don't make three videos a week, how do you expect to make videos every day? Actually, well, when I worked with Adam LZ, uh, when he came out to our last day of the build for my Ford Explorer drift build with ps for build that's a lot of builds in a sentence, build, build, build. I actually saw what it took to make a daily vlog, make something that people will actually watch. I mean, he has a really engaged audience and all he does is he takes a camera around and he looks at the highlights of what the day is. I mean, I was really surprised at how little uh, editing and how little um, uh, camera work was actually required to make a compelling video and his videos are really good. So I think I'm gonna follow that format. Obviously, I'm gonna put my style on it. I did get a new camera. You guys are on it right now or I'm on it now. So I'm going to try to do as close to five videos per week, which means one per every weekday. Now, if I don't do five videos per week, then I'll just skip a day. I'm not really going to stress it that much because when you start stressing things, when it starts becoming work, like work, work, where you dread coming in, then it really shows in the product. And I don't want that. I, I want it to be a conversation with you guys. I want you guys to see what it's really like working on the cars I work on. And I want you guys to be involved. I, I love it when you guys give me feedback. I love it when uh, stuff works out. And I also love it when it doesn't work out. And that's sort of the reality of these things. 
but uh, I'm really excited about that. So starting today, I'm gonna have daily videos, which means tomorrow and whenever. But I have one more announcement and it's, it's a pretty big one. So at the end of the month, I'm starting a podcast. And you guys have probably listened to lots of podcasts like Carcast with Adam Carolla, The Smoking Tire, uh, Hooniverse Podcast, a lot of really good podcasts. But mine is gonna be more towards uh, wrenching, more towards the uh, technical side of things. It's also gonna be about car culture. It's also gonna be about working on your own car, that sort of stuff. And I think that I'm decent enough to speak into a microphone, but I know you guys don't wanna just listen to me monologue for an hour, so I have a partner. And my partner's name is Andrew Howell. Now you guys might know him, you might not, but uh, if you don't, he is the uh, lead guy for marketing and, and brand management for Njuku Racing. Njuku Racing is uh, the company that sponsors basically everybody cool in the automotive world. And they have a headquarters uh, pretty close to my house. It's 20 minutes away. They actually saved us on our last build by uh, giving us a really cool hydro e-brake for the Ford Explorer. And I really love uh, working with him. He's a really cool guy, really knowledgeable, has an awesome Focus ST that makes a lot of brap brap sounds, which will make it onto these videos. So uh, look forward to that. But enough rambling for me. Let's go check out the cars. So we start with this. This is my daily driver, Mercedes-Benz 2007 S. 600 and you guys have seen it in my video where I take the old owner Tyler Hoover from Hoovy's Garage in the back and we just talk about how we got it and uh, why it was so cheap because I only paid 12 grand for this thing and it was a really really good value for when I got it back then but it's still a really really good value now. One of the best things about this car is the cold start. Ooh, let's hear it. Runs a little rich on the cold start, I have to admit, but ugh, it is so nice in here. Oh, it's so quiet. So the plan for this car is nothing. It has 160,000 miles on it, and it is damn good. It has no check engine lights, uh, nothing egregious uh, is going on with this car, and it has a tune putting out 600 horsepower and 700 foot-pounds of torque in complete luxury. We have the massaging seats, we have the heated and cooled everything. Everything works as it should. Uh, it does need a little bit of a spruce up. I did screw up on these uh, buttons right here and yeah, that's gonna need redoing. And uh, switch right here is kind of missing the headrest portion, but that's pretty much it. And this is gonna be my daily driver for the foreseeable future. I do drive a lot with this car and I recently went to New Jersey. Uh, it's a 2,200 mile round trip uh, journey. This car does it with no problems at all. It is very, very comfortable, but it does need some maintenance. So this car is getting uh, new plugs, new uh, filters, uh, brakes, everything that requires, uh, everything that this car would require for a tune-up. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that and explaining to you how you can do it yourself and not have to go to the Mercedes dealer because the Mercedes dealer wants a lot of money for this car because when this car was new, it was $150,000 and I definitely didn't pay $150,000 so I'm not paying those prices as if it were $150,000. Look at that space in the back. You can fit so many dead, but I mean, uh, you can fit so many uh, vibrant people back there. It's not a mob car at all, no. I mean, the mob wouldn't need a panoramic sunroof. Now, now would they? No, 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 no. I think I've been watching too much uh, Sopranos lately. I've been binge watching it because uh, Matt Ferris said you should watch it. But uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm rambling again. On to the next one. Now here go my Dually, my F350 with dual rear wheels and uh, crew cab and long bed and one hell of a stain job right here. This, this truck used to be white and this staining is from my sprinkler system somewhere in here and uh, in, at four in the morning just goes off and just blasts the side of a truck. I should probably fix that because that's not a good look. It looks, I don't know, incontinent or something. This truck is amazing. This truck is really, really good. It's been dead reliable for the entire time I've had it. It is leaking a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's leaking. Uh, but these trucks leak a little bit. 
I'm not too concerned about that. But as far as builds go, this one is gonna be really simple. Maybe I get some new wheels, maybe not. I actually sort of dig the stock look, the stock small wheel look. Uh, I love the utilitarian nature of this truck. So what I'm gonna do is just clean it up and make sure it's running really well, maybe get the performance up, and finally take off these damn tinted taillights. I really hate these, and I never really got around to getting some decent red taillights. Even though I am in Florida, that, that really doesn't matter. But uh, check out that awesome parking job. Fit like a piece of paper in between here. This truck uh, is going to be my workhorse if I need anything towed, if I need to put anything in the back, and right now I have some MR2 parts back here. Just have some random uh, random metal that I gotta take to the recycler. Maybe I'll up the power, maybe I'll get a new turbo, maybe, you know, somewhere down the line, I'll, uh, I'll get some real power goals and mods. But for now, this is an awesome truck. And uh, yeah, anybody who can pick it up should pick it up, but just not this one, because it's mine. And moving right along, bam. This is the MR2 you guys all know and love, and I don't know if you love it, but uh, I definitely do. Uh, it currently has a front end off because I still have to button up a few things as far as headlights and uh, front bumper support, but these wheels are looking really good. These are the 5Z Gen FN01R-Cs, and I got some new Sumitomo tires on it. I don't like the fact that it sticks out just a little bit on the back end. In the front, it, it's a little bit sunken in, so I still have to get some uh, better spacers. But for now, it's sitting outside and I still have to put some interior panels in it. Uh, the engine is running. I did drive it here, but uh, I do wanna have a, maybe a mild rebuild or just something as, as far as cams or uh, a new turbo, just something to give it that extra oomph that it needs because honestly, these engines, even though they're really prevalent and uh, really popular with modern communities, they don't actually make that much power. Let me, actually, let me see if it's open. Okay, so we have one seat in here and uh, a bare interior. It's, it's actually not that bad. It looks like uh, no water got in. So it seems my weather stripping has worked and uh, doesn't really smell moldy in here. But uh, let me try to open up the uh, trunk or engine panel rather see if that works. Uh, maybe give it one of these, a Fonzie. Okay, uh, the Fonzie does not work. There we go. Okay, maybe the Fonzie partially worked. In any case, here's the engine. 3S GTE Gen 2, and uh, yeah, it is kind of riced out. And I will be doing a lot of work to this. Uh, I'm planning on doing a rear mount intercooler, which will sit right here. I'm just gonna cut a hole right here. Intercooler is gonna be right here. It's an air to air intercooler. And we're just gonna run pipes from the engine bay into the trunk because the trunk is basically useless. I don't really need the trunk that much. There is a front trunk as well, so I don't care about that. And uh, this car is just gonna be for cheap speed, cheap style, and uh, cheap laughs. So that's uh, that's where this build is going. Now, a lot of you are asking about when I'm gonna finish this build. This is gonna be towards the front of the pack because again, I wanna finish as much as I can this year uh, before I get to more of the more ambitious projects that I've been wanting to do. And uh, this is one ambitious project that maybe I bit off of more than I can chew, but I still wanna get done with it. So uh, I'm really, really excited. So this should be done uh, possibly end of February or uh, early March, something like that. Again, I'm not sure if you wanna hold me to that, depending on uh, how good my track record is, but oh, look at that stance, it's so good. Uh, and as far as paint, not sure what I'm, what I'm gonna do. Maybe vinyl, maybe plastic dip. I want it to be something unique. I want it to be something fun. And I want it to be something cheap because I am not spending any more money on this car, well, more than I need to. So, okay, on to the next one. Wah! Okay, this is my Porsche 944 Turbo. And this car, da 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 da, is for sale. Unfortunately, when you have as many projects as I do, and when you look at how many car keys you have and you start looking like a janitor, you need to get rid of some. So, this car is 
going up on the auction block. Uh, it might be on Bring a Trailer, it might be on eBay, I haven't decided yet, but uh, this car is definitely leaving uh, my fleet just because this requires a full rebuild uh, and restoration because it is a really low mileage car. It has 47,000 original miles. And I wanna give it the love that it deserves, but right now I just don't have the time for it. And I think you guys don't really wanna see a full nuts and bolts restoration because that can take months, if not years. And uh, I don't even think I'll have a channel uh, if, if I do that. But uh, it is a pretty solid, pretty clean car. There are a few issues. I mean, you saw that the front end was off. So that just means that there's more room to work on things. No, it's, uh, it does mean that it had a little impact right here. Well, the previous owner hit a kind of like a low garden wall. And right here, you can see that uh, it just smashed in what is the fender liner. I mean, this is the frame. The frame is totally fine. Uh, there's no damage anywhere else, but it's just this fender liner, which is made of metal uh, because Porsche, they made, oh, I'm already dirty, oh, come on. Porsche, in their infinite wisdom, made everything out of metal and galvanized metal, which uh, means that this thing doesn't have any rust. If you ever see any terminal rust on a 944, run because that means this that car was in a in a really bad accident or it was just repaired poorly or something but this car is very very sound and uh, I might do a video on what exactly it needs because I haven't actually had it on the lift. But for now, I'm just going to uh, clean it up, make sure it's running, and it is running. I have a new ECU in it, have a new crank position sensor, and uh, yeah, just uh, get it on its way. So I'm looking for around five grand, which for a project car, which uh, needs all this stuff, might sound a little steep, but these cars are going up in price. Uh, old Porsches, especially Porsche turbos, are going up in price. This is a low mileage example. I have all the paperwork that uh, that you need. I have the uh, original window sticker. I have uh, basically all the uh, service records and maintenance records since new. So it, it is a pretty good deal if you want to have a nuts and bolts restoration like I did. But uh, yeah, well, let me know. You can DM me or find me on Instagram or whatever uh, if you want the car. Uh, I'm negotiable, but uh, yeah, I'm also not a very good salesperson if I show them all of this as the first time they see the car. Okay, on to the next one. Hey, it's the ultimate daily driver that never gets driven daily with a bonus lizard on the fender. Look at that. Oh, where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? I wonder how many subscribers he has. Probably more than me. So this car is really special to me because I bought it for three grand um, many, many years ago and it was a stock as a rock S500 and I turned it into this, into uh, something that is the ultimate daily driver as far as I'm concerned. It is a very, very good example of what an S500 can be. I put an AMG exhaust on it. Well, the back half of an AMG exhaust. Uh, it is basically stock uh, other than some wheels and some tires that I have to kind of fix and my dog's going crazy in there. Well, the tires right here, they're a little bit too bulbous for the fender, so I might get some uh, some tires that are a little skinnier. Uh, these are like 265s, maybe I'll do you know 245s all around, but this car is quite clean. The only thing I'm not really jazzed about is the quality of the Plastidip. Now, the Plastidip itself, it's a really good quality product and I enjoy putting it on. The problem is this car is huge and putting it on in my garage where I didn't have a lot of room to work and also I wasn't that experienced uh, so it definitely was my fault. There were some runs like right here. You can see there's a run right here. Uh, on one side there is, it's, it's basically a lot darker just because there were less coats uh, here than there were on the other car, on the other side of the car rather. And right here you can see some runs uh, some like bubbling, some runs. And this is just from me not taking the time to prep it. So what we're gonna do with this car, oh, before I forget, I actually bought these. So I bought a set of these. I want you guys to guess how much these cost used. So these are just plastic panels. And I want you guys to guess how much these cost. And put it in the comments, pause the video, and I will let you know uh, in three, two, 
one, it was two hundred fifty dollars. What? Two hundred fifty dollars for basically two two small pieces of plastic. Actually, it was four pieces of plastic since it's on the other side of the car as well. Four pieces of plastic that probably cost Mercedes seventeen cents to make, but they charged me two hundred fifty dollars used. By the way, new they would have been three hundred something dollars. That's just insane. But uh, in any case, before I digress or after I digress. I actually had uh, some come to Damascus, a road to Damascus moment where I, I figured that in order for me to sell this car, and I do want to sell this car, I will be uh, redoing the plastic dip. I want to make this really clean for the next owner. I want to make it uh, really interesting for the next owner, and I want it to be the actual ultimate daily driver. So the next episodes for this car, which will be coming up fairly shortly, uh, you will be seeing me take off this whole blue plastic dip job, uh, prepping it again, and then we're gonna do it properly, and I'm gonna have some training from uh, the guys at dipyourcar.com. So that's gonna be really cool. Well, it's, it's really cool that I can do that uh, just because they're so awesome at what they do and also because I'm in Florida and I can just have the car go to them so um, yeah that's that's awesome look at this I bet you've never seen this before it's like a you know s55 AMG with a tow hitch in the back yeah this thing is uh, this thing is built for daily duty 100% and I'm sad to see it go uh, when I get rid of it of course but I think, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna make somebody very, very happy. It's a super, super solid car. Now that we've seen everything that's on the outside of my house, now we can see what's in the garage. And that's actually the most interesting thing, at least to me, because those are the good cars. So my garage is pretty crammed in at the moment, but let's start from left to right. On the left is my 1995 Toyota Supra SE manual naturally aspirated and to be honest I don't know what I'm gonna do with this car yet but I think it has to do with uh, installing a new engine because this engine 2JZ GE makes around 225 horsepower drives like a truck frankly and um, I don't want this in there anymore so we're gonna put in a GTE VVTi with a six-speed but not the six-speed that came from the Mark IV Supra we're also not gonna do the regular 350Z six-speed that uh, usually comes in these things. Let's take a look inside. Oh yeah, actually it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner than I uh, than I remember. I do have a bunch of schmutz over there, but uh, these red seats are they're growing on me a little bit, but they're way too loud for my taste. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put a six-speed from a BMW. It's a Getrag six-speed from an E46 M3, and uh, that should slot in nicely right here. And we do need an adapter plate and a custom flywheel, all that sort of uh, goodness, but it should run like stock. And the power goals for this car are mm, sizable for a Supra. I do want to get this to 600 horsepower with a single turbo with something uh, interesting like that. Maybe a Borg Warner S366. Those are pretty cheap and they make really good power. But I want this car to be good on the track, on the quarter mile but also I want it to handle. So this is gonna get a new suspension, uh, new wheels, new tires, new brakes. Uh, that is gonna be a all around GT car. This Supra is gonna be the GT car that I want it to be. It's not gonna be a quarter mile, uh, just dragster with tubbed rear and uh, all it can do is go street. No, I, I want this thing to uh, go around corners and that's, uh, that's really important in any of my cars. I don't want them to just do one thing only. This is... <laughs> As you can see, this is how much I drive it. I just have to have the battery tender on it or else the battery dies because the only time I move it is just to put it inside the garage and outside the garage when I need some space here. But uh, that will change. I will get this thing on the road. I want to drive it a little bit as an NA and it does look pretty awesome. So the power goals are there and I do want to change a lot of this uh, cosmetic stuff, but just because this is gonna be a longer build in progress, or at least that's what I think, it doesn't mean that uh, it's gonna take that long from your perspective because I am gonna have lots of updates. This is gonna come up right after the MR2 build. You can't even see it back there. This is gonna come up right after the MR2 build and uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. On to the next one, which is this. All right, let me step back a bit just so you can see how handsome this car is. This is my 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. I love it so much. Uh, I think that this is the best looking or one of the best looking cars 
ever made, bar none. I think Aston got it 100% right the first time with at least the body of this car. The performance, eh, they could have worked on it, but the body of this car just looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna take it from the other side and uh, keep it trained on that Aston just so you guys don't miss a beat. If you guys don't know, I bought it from Doug DeMuro, uh, really big YouTuber now. I bought it from before he was, you know, Daddy DeMuro, whatever his weird commenters call him. It has been awesomely reliable and I actually just took it for a wash. It's nice and clean, um, but there have been some issues along the way. I have had uh, an AC issue, which I solved with basically no money and uh, all I did was maintenance. So this car has been extremely, extremely reliable, uh, especially for the price I got it for. So I originally bought this car for $36,000 and for 36 grand, it is a bargain because it's a hand-built, essentially supercar, but I'll call it a sports car just so you guys don't have uh, an aneurysm about uh, what a supercar is. This car, unfortunately, is going up for sale. Now it's for a few reasons. I recently bought a project and it is a lot of money, this project. It's the most money I've ever spent on a car. I'm not revealing what it is just yet. You guys are gonna love it. That's gonna be coming up in February. But um, yeah, I just, I simply can't afford to have two relatively expensive cars. I mean, I'm not like Salamandrin or whatever. I can't just afford these cars. So uh, yeah, I have to get rid of it. Uh, also, I think I got everything I needed out of it. Honestly, it, it is a great cruiser. It is a great weekend warrior. I can drive it every day. Uh, it doesn't really attract that much attention, but I think as far as making content, uh, as far as making videos, as far as uh, just doing stuff with a car, as far as uh, modifications and, and power goals and all that stuff, I've reached it with this car. And short of going forced induction and possibly blowing the 4.3 liter engine, which I don't want to do because it costs a lot of money because some guy in uh, Britain handcrafted it, you know, and, and it has to be set to that standard, then, you know, I, I think it's time to get rid of it. And I'm not sure who it's going to go to. Uh, maybe it's going to go to uh, one of you or it's going to go to somebody that uh, also makes YouTube videos and will continue the legacy because this, as far as I know, is the most famous Aston Martin Vantage ever. And uh, if you look at view count, this thing is is up there. My most popular video, my two million plus viewed video uh, is of this car. It's just stuff that uh, you don't know about your Aston Martin uh, or stuff that uh, wasn't made by Aston Martin on my Aston Martin. So uh, the chief among them was this thing, was the key fob for the Aston Martin. So yeah, it just says Volvo right there. And this is definitely an Aston Martin key fob. Also, Shout out to uh, to all the janitors. I, I got you guys, uh, I think I got you guys licked with amount of keys. This is sort of ridiculous. But this car is unfortunately going for sale. I love it. There is zero wrong with it. It has about 64,000 miles. It is, uh, it is mint. I mean, as mint as a used car, as a used Aston Martin can be. Uh, there are a few rock chips and whatnot, but it has never had an accident. Uh, it is in really good shape, a really good mechanical and, and underneath and everything is taken care of. Yeah, this car is a perfect buy for anybody and I'll sell it for exactly what I got it for. $36,000, uh, I'm not, I added some value, meaning that I put coilovers on it and uh, I put a new exhaust on it and all that stuff, but I don't want to lose any money. So uh, yeah, 36 grand I think is a, is a decent enough deal for this car. But on to, oh yeah, you guys have been asking about her. So here she is, the SL55, my 2003 SL55 that famously was bought for $8,900, which is, quite a bargain considering that this is 500 horsepower. It basically has a hand-built engine and uh, it is a torque monster. But um, I had the really good idea of making it into a manual transmission model. Now, they never made a manual transmission model. No, not even in Europe. Uh, not even for the base models or anything like that. Uh, this is a only automatic, so I decided to make the first manual. And as you can tell, it is not manual yet. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm stopping the project? No, actually, uh, it, it's still going on, but uh, turns out 
Making a manual transmission from scratch is pretty hard. I want this thing to be manual more than anybody, more than any of you commenters uh, that have been waiting for it. Believe me, I want it more. And what I'm waiting on is just for the transmission to get done. Now, I made a video of when I went to Budapest and I talked to the guy that was making my transmission. Uh, his name is Amon Oliver. And uh, we're actually grafting it from a BMW 530D. And uh, that is a six speed manual. It has really uh, weirdly, uh, it has odd gears for a car like this, but for a car with that much torque, uh, I think it's it's good. It has diesel gear ratios. The first might be unusable, but the rest should be really good. So uh, if that works out, then it works out. But apparently there was a little bit of a, let's say delay, because I should have had the transmission by the end of the year 2017. It is not that anymore. Uh, it is two months later and I still don't have the transmission. And the problem was because they, they had a problem with the input shaft, uh, it was too short, uh, so they had to make a new flywheel. So that should be getting resolved this month, I, I'm not sure. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do with this car is I am going to be making an exhaust. And we're going to be, well, we're gonna be keeping this rear section and we're gonna make sure that this, this rear section actually goes up because uh, as you can see, I have it, uh, have it held up here by some wire or whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna make exhaust cutouts for here. That's gonna be really awesome. And I want this thing to make a little more noise because even though it makes 550 some odd horsepower, I want it to be a little louder than, than what, it, uh, what it has stock. And I'm also gonna put on headers, but after that, I'm gonna work on the manual transmission swap. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be a one episode deal like I did with the Ford Explorer, like it's just a one long episode, or if I'm gonna split it up into segments, probably gonna be split up into segments, but who knows? Uh, maybe I can make a how-to on how to do this for the very first time, um, because yeah, this is gonna be a, a, a quite a project. So as far as parts for what I need for this car, I have a solution for the ECU, at least I think so. Uh, it's called a Makina. It's a little OBD2 port and uh, you can connect it to your computer and it basically hacks into your CAN bus system, the closed area network, or I think that's what CAN stands for. Uh, and that basically controls all the functions of the car, all the electronic functions of the car. And uh, I can sort of mix and match different signals and uh, make the car think that there's an automatic transmission when it's not really there. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the ECU thinks it's in neutral uh, because I don't think it pulls timing and it can still sense load and it doesn't have a rev limiter. So that might take care of that. And also if I press in the parking brake, then the ECU is gonna essentially think it's in park. So uh, that should make my key not stick inside the, the actual keyhole. Uh, but that is, again, that's in theory. I don't know what it's gonna be in practice. As far as the pedal set, I have a pedal set from an SLK 230. That actually has a similar pedal set to this. They're, they're made of plastic. And I will be going over what I'm gonna do with this car uh, in a future episode, because uh, there is a lot of detail that you guys need to see. And uh, there's a lot of detail that goes into uh, some of these. And I'm gonna go into further detail. I'm just giving you the broad strokes here. But uh, this should be done, uh, hopefully within the next few months, depending on when I get my transmission. But if for some reason that transmission does not work out, I have a guy in the UK that's willing to make me an adapter plate for a Tremec T56. And that is the gearbox from Camaros and CTSVs and Vipers and everything that makes really high horsepower, really high torque and uh, has a manual transmission. So that could be a really good option for this car if that BMW gearbox doesn't work out because I want the BMW gearbox to work out just because I don't wanna spend a lot of money. I like to do this stuff on a budget. Uh, but yeah, this thing isn't going anywhere unless of course I get Jay Leno to drive it and then I can sell it to him, which would be a dream, but uh, we're, I'm not really holding my breath for that. Even though if Jay, if you're watching, yo, right there. So that is it for my garage tour of 2018. I know it might not be the most uh, overwhelming thing in the world, or it might be the most overwhelming thing in the world if you're looking at this and saying, how the heck is he gonna finish all these cars. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm in the same boat, but I think one day at a time and we'll get everything done. But uh, we do need to get everything done and that is my New Year's resolution. Big shout out to you guys. You guys made my channel possible. We went from 20 something thousand in the beginning of 2017 to over 150,000 now. 
and it, it's been a really, really fun ride. I can't thank you enough. You guys have just made everything, all my dreams possible, all this stuff, even though I might bite off more than I, I can chew sometimes. Yeah, this stuff is for you guys. Um, this stuff is so you guys can see what it's like really working on these cars and, you know, the, the pitfalls and, you know, financially and, and how this all works. Uh, I do this so I can share it all with you. So thank you so much. And uh, I hope you guys like what I have in store for 2018. And I'll see you next time.